You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for June 22nd, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where every day seems like the longest day of the year, it's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Solstice right now. This we is are. the solstice. We're recording on the solstice, right? We are. We'd like to welcome back our uh, big sponsor from last week. We had a lot of feedback about this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'd like to welcome back RubeTube. The RubeTube. Are you tired of your stream of state-run propaganda being interrupted by double plus ungood information that makes your head hurt? I know I am. Well, the same team of brilliant customer fulfillment's vertical synergy integrators who brought you Tizzy, the online dating app for hysterics. Now brings you the Rube Tube. The Rube Tube applies state of the art heuristic AI filters and Heisenberg compensators to eliminate every trace of irritating bad thinkfulness from your news broadcasts. The Rube Tube, it's Fox News without Shep Smith. And and we did get a new sponsor literally just moments ago, Blue Gal. Like an hour ago, I know. Yeah. yeah, it just came it came off the fax machine. Our new sponsor is called Flack You, custom designed message jackets for awful people. Whether you're a Republican president declaring mission accomplished as the war you lied the country into goes horribly wrong, or you're a walking Republican brand accessory who wants everyone to know that you do not give a damn about the toddlers your husband put into cages, sending the perfect fuck you, we don't care message at just the right moment is an art and a science. So when you don't know what to say, but you want it to be really shitty and you want to own the libs, give the people at Flack You custom design message jackets for all the people a call. Flack you, our slogan is so horrifying, we can't say it on the air. That's beautiful, Drift Glass. But, you. you know, I, I worry a little bit about you and your tone and yes. whether you're being, uh, you know, yeah, in yeah. keeping with the New York Times style book. It's true. It's true. I, I went against the New York Times warned me. One of our listeners appreciated the fact that I had cut these swears down to a, a manageable amount. And I, 20. I, I, I there do were try. 20 F words. I had to count them because I had to replace them to cross post yes. it at Crooks and Liars. This is, yes. a, this is a long story, but yeah, you said the F word 20 times in your wrote, New York Times post. I wrote the F word 20 times. <laughs> you said and wrote the F word 20 times. I did. Uh, very specifically for, for a very specific reason. As I don't say nearly often enough on this podcast, um, Blue Gal and I are both writers first. Mm-hmm. We came to podcasting eight years ago, but we've been writing. Uh, you've been writing for 14 years now. Is that right, Blue Gal? I've Almost been 14. writing since uh, November of 2004. So, yeah, yeah 14 yeah. years in November. And I'm 13 and a half um, mm-hmm. or so. So we've been writing a long time every day about politics in America and media in America and so forth. And before that, we were both writers. Anyway, we wrote stories and we wrote essays. And we mm-hmm. wrote all kinds of stuff. We both okay. love language. A hot date for us doing the crossword <laughs> puzzle over coffee. That's right. Um, and and we both adore it. But see, the thing is, I own the entire English language. Mm-hmm. And so do you. And so does everyone else out there. And picking the right word is an art and a science. And occasionally using the F word or the S word is exactly the right word to use. And when you're fighting against fascists and theocrats who have taken over your government, Mm-hmm. And are wrecking every democratic institution in sight and laughing about it and rubbing your nose in it. Um, and you let fly with the occasional fuck you fucking Nazis, let's say. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when the New York Times you know, collapses collectively onto the fainting couch and says, the problem is a lack of civility. On both sides. On both sides. Mm-hmm. It's a shame that both sides are being so uncivil. And I, ha- I went back to 2006 because I have archives. And dredged up the late David Broder's column in which this was the smack in the middle of the Iraq war melting down. Mm -hmm. Turns out another Republican president was an epic disaster as a person and as a leader, as a human being, that his his administration was wildly corrupt and 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 evil almost from top to bottom, was doing horrible things and lying about it. And the 
Uh, Fox News was laughing about it. Right wing radio was laughing about it and, and calling liberals traitors and monsters and liars and 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 the tuberative foul mouthed bloggers of the left. Right, were the people that David Broder called out as being equally bad uh, as the extremes on the right. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing new in this. When the New York Times, the establishment press, the Beltway media cannot, cannot, cannot pretend any longer that the liberals are wrong on the facts of the matter, they bring out the tone police mm -hmm. to explain how it's the civility. It's the rudeness of the whole thing. It's just so very wrong. So I wrote a whole column and, and how to use... Uh, fuck at a dinner party. <laughs> and um, it, the point being, I I will use the right word um, every time. I'll try to anyway. And occasionally I'll fail, just like humor. Uh, sometimes jokes aren't funny. Mm -hmm. And and that's the fault of the person who's telling it, not the language they're using. Uh, and, but I reserve the right to use any word I choose, uh, just, uh, regardless of who gets pissed off about it, if it says exactly what I want it to say. Right, right. And right. that was my column today. Can, I, my, can oh. I just kind of dovetail that conversation into sure. another one? And that is this sort of belief out there in the ether, and it's being pushed by the White House, and it's being pushed by Trump's defenders in, in the mainstream media and uh, people who can't cope in, in the rest of the media uh -huh. about lying. Yes. And lying is incivility and lying right. is abuse. Like it or not, we are in a relationship with Donald Trump. He is the so-called president of the United States. And he therefore holds a constitutional role yes. over the United States of America. We're in an arranged marriage, a shotgun right. marriage. Exactly. And... He is abusing this country by lying every day. Yes, he is. His party is abusing this country by lying every day. Mm -hmm. And I have been uh, staying at the edge today of a conversation about Melania and her jacket. Yeah. Uh, because she wore, this is, we, we come, come to the podcast, we come to the microphone right now dealing with the shock of seeing her in a jacket that says, uh, I don't really care. Do you? And this is a fashion statement painted on the back of her jacket. As she leaves the internment camps where her husband has, has imprisoned babies. Was she getting on the plane to go there or was she coming back? I don't know. Okay. I, I, I think she I know was getting, cause she wasn't wearing the same. She changes clothes on the plane. So she does that. That happens. So, mm -hmm. um, in any event, on the core in the course of this trip and climbing onto an airplane, uh, she was wearing a thirty nine dollar fashion jacket that is has it's a it's a green army green flak jacket, and printed on the back in sort of a paint font is "I don't really care, do you?" Mm -hmm. Which is uh, you know designed for I'm sorry knowing that because I live with two of them, it's designed for an adolescent girl. Yes. Okay. That's, a, that is who it's designed for. To shock and provoke. To shock you and provoke you and make you feel as though, oh my gosh, she doesn't care what I think. <laughs> and yes, adolescent girls have that attitude. Uh, Melania Trump is a grown ass woman. Mm -hmm. Uh I personally believe that she is also an abused spouse, and I believe that given lots and lots of evidence to that effect. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if, as I said on Twitter, if today, if if this is her fuck you to your husband, her husband, that she's going to somehow disrupt the mechanism right. uh, by making this the story, uh, you know, she can't. She can't, there's all kinds of things she can't say, but she can wear a jacket. Well, and she would have to have the help of her staff in order to do that. I can't believe the staff let her on the plane with that on, but no. that's another story. Uh, I got a lot of clap back immediately from uh, other women on Twitter saying, no, no, the benefit of the doubt train has left the station for oh, Melania yes. Trump. Uh, Melania Trump, who may very well be an illegal immigrant. Yeah. 
We still haven't resolved that. Nope. We still haven't seen her papers. I, I'm, no. I'm not joking. No, um, we're not it, joking. And she is quite possibly an, an undocumented uh, person in the United mm-hmm. States who was here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and according according to your own husband's uh, view of the law, should be tossed out of the country along with her well, son. Except she got here on a genius grant, a genius visa. So, uh, you know, no one else could do her job because of her high IQ. Uh, mm-hmm. And her parents are also mm-hmm. um, be they live in the United States based on chain migration. Yes, that is do. that is a bona fide fact. So. Yes. Uh, yeah, there's a lot going on there. Um, and I learned something today about Elaine Cho also, who is Mitch McConnell's wife and sits as the secretary of commerce in the Trump well, secretary administration. Of Labor. Secretary of Labor. Are you sure? I think okay. commerce is, um. Oh yeah. Okay. Wizened, um, McWalnut face. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, but she sits in the Trump cabinet and I thought that she became a citizen through being, you know, a billionaire's daughter and so forth. Uh, It took her 10 years to become a U.S. citizen. She came here at the age of eight, Mm -hmm. not speaking English, uh, many, many sisters and brothers, very large family. And again, I don't know all of the details, but I do know that she did not become a U.S. citizen until 10. She had been in this country for 10 years. I have breaking so, Elaine Chow news, by the way. Yes. What? She, she is secretary of transportation. Thank you. She secretary was. The, the reason I, I misremember that she was secretary of labor under George W. Bush. Under George W. Which Bush. Means- and she, she's one of the most qualified mm-hmm. people that Trump has actually put on the cabinet in terms of experience and I, education. And I can tell you well stories educated. about mm-hmm. how she ran the Department of Labor because uh, a lot of my programs were funded by the Department of Labor when I when I worked in that arena. Okay, we'll do well, that on another day. day. Not today. <laughs> we'll do that on another day. Uh, the point is that uh, she is the she and Mrs. Trump are the two people within Trump's orbit who have experience as immigrants, who have experience with the immigration system, who it might be uh, helpful to have as part of the conversation on how do you handle immigration? Instead, we have Stephen Miller uh, giving Trump his advice on immigration. Mm -hmm. Elaine Cho was not at the meeting yesterday with members of Congress and, uh, the president, the so-called president, uh-huh. uh, there was actually only one woman in the room. Uh, everyone else was a white man. I noticed that. Yeah. Who and was the woman? the woman? The woman who was there was Liz Cheney. Oh, of course it was. Liz never closed Gitmo Cheney. Right. right. Uh, who I learned today uh, ha- had her turn at the gavel at the House of Representatives yesterday. And uh, took that opportunity to silence Louis Gutierrez oh, nice. and call him out of order and tell him to sit down because he had brought two migrant children to the House floor to visit. Uh-huh. And uh, it was out of order and she gaveled him. Yeah. So well, here I- she is at Trump's table. And uh, I I just find it r- one more one thing after another after another indicates to me that this is an authoritarian government mm-hmm. and uh, that things are very, very wrong in this country. And we've got one chance to fix it. Well, can and I mention, then we've, we've lost our country. Can I, I mentioned that this is not the only mention of Dick Cheney in our notes today. No, really? That, see, I, you dovetailed me and I'm going to dovetail you right back. Beautiful. Because right. that's how... You go here. I, I wanted to mention that this was the week. I'm jumping ahead just a little bit, but we'll go back to our regular scheduled outrage. Uh, Donald Trump accused Democrats of quoting of quote wanting illegal immigrants to pour in and infest our country. Yes. The direct quote was Democrats are the problem. They don't care about crime and, and want illegal immigrants, no matter how bad they may be, to pour in and infest and infest our country like MS thirteen, which for you youngsters out there, is something we call Cheney-esque. Uh-huh. Because you might remember that Dick Cheney's uh, campaign style and campaign message in 2004 during the Bush campaign for re-election uh, to the White House was, if you vote for Democrats, 
terrorists will come and murder your children. That's right. That's right. And for you even young, so it's 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 not just uh, Cheney esque and Trump esque. It's also Rovian. It's also Nixonian. Mm -hmm. It's also straight out of the mm -hmm. Lee Atwater playbook. Black people are going to come and murder you. That's what liberals want. And it's also, just for you history students out there, the basis of the campaign that Bernie Epton ran against Harold Washington for mayor of Chicago in 1983. Mm -hmm. Bernie Epton's slogan over a mob of people who were running around going, ah, was Bernie Epton before it's too late. Before it's too late. This is Republicanism. This is not mm -hmm. Trumpism, Republicanism. Liberals want to let bad people, usually brown, come into your neighborhood, usually safe and full of white people, and murder you and take your stuff and marry your daughters and God knows what else. We will protect you from that. That has been the Republican message for 50 years. And when yeah. you have a party that's built around that message, that's built around pandering to paranoid right-wing imbeciles, bigots, suburban morons who believe that to be true, the inevitable outcome is going to be a thug, racist liar like Donald Trump. That's just the way mm -hmm. it's going to be. So uh, in addition, just there were more lies. I just want to do, also mention in this uh, context, uh, Donald Trump also added the people are suffering because of the Democrats, because Democrats, and this is a new one, have we've created and they've created that they've let it happen a massive child smuggling industry that's exactly what it has become so democrats are responsible for uh, i remember from the republican debates uh harvesting babies for their parts and right. selling, selling them for profit selling them right. for profit that baby was in the, parts. Baby yep. part, the republican presidential debate and that person was not hauled off the stage put in a sack and was never heard from again no that was a legitimate republican contender Mm -hmm. And now we're in charge of a massive child smuggling ring. And, of course, we want to let brown people into the, in, into the country to murder you. And there are, you know, 30 percent of this country for whom that is normal. That's what the inside of their rotted out brain sounds like all day, every day, all day, every day, all day, every day. So Blue Gal's right. We have one chance to fix this. And mm -hmm. it comes in November. Yep. So if yep. you aren't registered and if everyone you know isn't registered – Get your ass out there and make that happen because these people have to be stopped um, as quickly. This is, this is our last chance to save this. I, I really got to that conclusion this week that yeah. this is our last chance yeah. to save this country. Well, when, when you've made to Rachel Maddow democracy. cry. Yeah, well, this has been a really emotional, hard week. And uh, I, I did want to put in our notes uh, because I thanked him and said, I think you've come up with the title of our podcast this week. <laughs> Someone tweeted to Ann Coulter, who has is an especially bad person this week. She is. Worse than usual. She is. Uh, uh, someone said to Ann Coulter on Twitter, uh, liberals' heads exploded this week, Ann. It didn't turn out the way you thought it would. <laughs> yeah. And I really uh, think this is a humongous fail for the Republican Party, for the Trump administration. And uh, as I said to several people today— Melania's jacket may have cost them the Senate. It's that's, I really I'm I'm to the point now where I look at that and I think, oh my God, if this is like brushed aside, which is what they're initially trying to do, say, oh come on, it's just a jacket. You know, I hope people aren't going to focus on that. I hope people are going to focus on this caring, lovely fashion model spokesmodel going down to Brownsville for five minutes to smile and take pictures and talk about how much she cares, right? Mm -hmm. Focus on that. Don't focus on the fact that she had emblazoned across the back of her jacket. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Ignore that part. Uh, that may be the straw that breaks the Senate, the hold on the Senate. Yeah, I mean, it might be, and it's certainly um, the, the net of, I mean, seeing Rachel Maddow break down in tears mm -hmm. uh, was, was stunning. Because she's Walter Cronkite. And I mean that in yeah. the nicest possible yeah. way. She's absolutely trustworthy. She has big glasses. Uh, she she delivers the news straight. Uh, she she does have her opinions, but she doesn't lie. Um, and to see her and just... And she doesn't get emotional. No. She, she doesn't allow the story to take her away. And no. this Babies in Cages did it for her, did it for the rest of us. Uh, I don't know of anyone <laughs> who wouldn't have gone to bed. I went to bed crying oh, yeah, on yeah. Tuesday no, night. No, it was, it was, I think everybody was just this absolutely it, devastated by this news that there are baby cages. There are baby prisons. There have been a We're few taking of those. babies away from the mother. Um, hmm? There have been a few of those nights in the last couple of years. Yep. I mean, the election night was, 
you, you oh, were, yeah. You know, yeah. But this, this is different. This is policy. Right. This isn't just losing an election and not knowing, not realizing, oh, this is the country I live in, yeah. you know, and you get up and you're ready to fight. This is, this is Hitler stuff. Right. This really is Hitler stuff. Right. And, uh, and not knowing what to do except to scream and cry and swear and march. And vote. And, and vote. vote and vote and get everyone <laughs> you know to vote. Doesn't, voting doesn't hold a baby right nope. now. Nope. Nope. Uh, well, th- that's the thing. The the immediate. And I know you wish that you could cry, Drift Class. I do. I do. And I do from time to time. But. And, you know, <laughs> when Rachel Maddow cried, I cried, too. Yes. And I thought. But this is so different because I cry all the time. <laughs> so. Well, my, and I don't. I'm not as professional. On the podcast as she is. My, my wife cries right. only at important, appropriate occasions. Um, and when she sees, a, you know, uh, a, a baby in a magazine that she thinks is probably going to be her grandbaby. <laughs> I wave it in your face. Like, I'm going to knit a sweater for her because this is going to be my grandbaby. That's right. Yes, I do. And it will. And it, it will. will. So my wife is is a, is a deep well of emotional health. And I'm a oh. bitter, a bitter old Irish asshole. So we're a, <laughs> we're a pretty good team. Um, and I don't apologize to my audience for crying because I know they're crying right along no, with me. So, no. well, and this was a week for it. This is absolutely a week and I, for I'm it. I'm not criticizing Rachel Maddow for apologizing. I no. know she's paid a lot of money to deliver the news, right. and she's she feels a professional responsibility no. uh, to not to to be able to read an AP story without breaking down. And so she did apologize uh, for that. And of course, everyone said you didn't need to. You're just human, right? Um, it, it reminds, but I do think that was a galvanizing moment yes. for a lot of women. Yes, uh, there have been stories. There's one in the New York Times about uh, my mother, the MSNBC viewer, yeah. who, yeah. <laughs> and it was told from the perspective of a millennial, of course, because that's who's you get to write guest op eds in the New York Times now, talking about uh, you know Republican dad who doesn't talk about politics much anymore. Mm-hmm. But mom has a glass of wine and starts with Chris Matthews and is up until mm-hmm. Rachel Maddow's over, until Lawrence O'Donnell's over, you know, because this is her survival link to reality. Oh, yeah. No, this this remi- uh, emotionally, this reminds me of um, uh, Katrina, uh, mm-hmm. the way the news media was wading through water, um, bodies floating in the water, children yeah. you know, just abandoned by their government. And right. and the the and members of the media up to their you know knees in sludge going what the hell's wrong with this country what why why isn't the federal government down here in force what the hell is wrong with you people I'm mean, really they, yeah. they lost their sort of because objectivity. their reality what they couldn't deny what the camera was showing right. and where they were standing and that happened today um, I'm sorry I don't know the name of the reporter but um, talking on MSNBC from. Tornillo, Texas, Tornillo, Texas, Mm -hmm. uh, said, and it's this man, and he's wearing uh, army green also, Mm -hmm. but he's a reporter. He said, the thing I can't shake, this is his quote, the thing I can't shake is everyone is lying. Right. Everyone. The president's lying. The heads of agencies are lying. The Border Patrol people on the ground are lying. That's not being. We are being told that there is nothing happening here, no tents. Look, there are at least 18 tents. Right. There are 400 kids in this wired compound right behind me. And, you know, he cannot believe, he can believe his eyes and ears and right. what he's seeing. Well, he cannot believe that people are just lying to him. I forget who pointed this out, but over the last, I don't know, seven days, um, members of official spokespeople for the Trump administration, you know, mm-hmm. the administration officials have changed their lies about their toddler internment camp program yep. 14 different times. 14 different times, Which is yeah. why your crazy Uncle Liberty doesn't suddenly doesn't want to talk about politics no more. Right. You know, the guy right. who, who knew every twist and turn of Obama's birth certificate and Benghazi and the conspiracy and Pizzagate suddenly doesn't want to talk about politics at all. Yep. Because, yep. It, because it turns out the libs were right. And, it, yep. and he doesn't... And that and, libs heads exploding is a huge thing that makes us, as I've said many times before... The moral majority. Yes, it does. And what are you going to do now? Well, and just someone pointed out the other day, and again, I don't know who was saying something like, "Is this Donald Trump's Katrina?" And <laughs> and, and did you laugh? And, no, because a smarter person <laughs> than me said, uh, "Trump's already had his Katrina." Trump's it was already Puerto- had a Katrina. It was, it was called Maria. It was in Puerto Rico, 
And by the way, Puerto, Puerto, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is yeah. a year later is still fucked because these people do not care about right. brown people. That's any, it. Any, That's white, it. any yeah. non-rich white person who's not right in front of them, they don't give a shit about. Yeah. And then they just lie and lie and lie and lie and lie and lie and yeah. lie about it. And that was Trump's Katrina. Right. Not this. And and it's ongoing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so uh, I did want I, to mention. I, I, I don't feel like lecturing our listeners about no. this because our listeners show up. Yes, they do. Every time. Uh, every time. Every time. Mm-hmm. So um, if you don't mind, Drift Glass. Yes, please, I'm yeah. going to pull up this wonderful letter that we got today. What a wonderful idea. Because I think we need a break to to just get back, get focused again. <laughs> uh, on, there are some good news. Yeah. And uh, I am going to refer to this person as Mrs. Smith because she Mrs. said no Smith. names, no names at all. Hi, DG and BG. A couple weeks ago, I arrived at an area where I parked my car to go on my daily walk along the river. It was around 730 in the morning, and as I got out to gather up the stuff I carry, my water bottle and everything, a fellow walked up to the lot from the trail and started doing stretches after his run. He soon came over to me and said, I noticed your bumper stickers. And guess what? She's got a both sides don't bumper sticker. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He paused and said, she wasn't sure what he was going to say. He right. said, they're awesome. It's so great to see stickers like these around here. And here is the red part of our state that makes the state purple. So, you know, yeah. that's yeah. where she lives, wherever that is. Uh-huh. Uh, he pointed to uh, one of them and said, I like that one. Lots of people have no idea what that's about. And it was the both sides don't sticker. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. I would have never figured he would have focused on that one. Uh I then explained where I got it, who you are, your podcast, how much I love what you do, smart, funny, empathetic, liberal, progressive, angry, but positive. Mm -hmm. And that since you only broadcast one hour a week, it is friendly and manageable. So he wrote down your web address. Then he commented on the other ones. And uh, he she has a Bernie sticker on her her uh, bumper sticker that says, um, Bernie, enough of this shit. Something like, <laughs> I voted for Bernie because of enough of this shit. Okay. Uh, and she has one that says, I'm already against the next war. Amen. Mm-hmm. And then he said, hey, is that the flying spaghetti monster? So he even knows about Pastafarians. <laughs> My God. Uh, this I live in a small town full of Republicans, and this guy was with it. So maybe my town is really changing. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the golden nugget of this story. I, I'm, I'm, this is all gold, Blue Gal. Yeah. So well, here's, a, here's an even better golden nugget. Okay. We're going to call him Mr. Jones because we have I Ms. haven't Smith heard this letter Mr. before, Jones. just so we're clear. I, this <laughs> so is she, he right has off. not heard this yet. No. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones teaches contemporary history at high school, at our high school. <laughs> gosh that must be hard around here i said well yes said mr jones i'm careful not to be partisan but i do talk about how corporations are destroying all of us not just some of us and quashing our democracy and i occasionally make breakthroughs one young man stayed after class one day he wanted to talk he came up to me and said mr jones i walk out of your class so angry about what's going on (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we chatted for a while and when the student left mr jones pumped his arm and said i got one <laughs> yeah get him yeah. young yeah. if the catholic church uses you anything yep that's right so. uh i asked him if he would like an i'm already against the next war bumper sticker because i have oh. a bunch of them in my uh huh. glove compartment <laughs> uh, I carry them in my car to pe- give to people who admire them. I've handed out about about a dozen. So oh, I think I should have a few both sides don't in my stash also. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I should too. To, just wanted you to know you might have a new listener signed Miss Smith. All right. Well, Miss Smith, fantastic. That is Yes. Thank you mind. very much for that letter. That cheered me up this morning and uh you know, spread the gospel. What can I say? That's what my heart grew ten do. times that day. Yeah, yeah. Like, by the way, uh, uh, my heart did grow uh, greatly listening to that letter. But we went to go see a movie. This uh, we this went week. to Five Dollar Tuesday. That's what Five Dollar Tuesday movie. <laughs> we did. And here's 
Here's the only thing I have to say about the entire movie going experience is this. Please, for God's sake, stop remaking The Grinch Stole Christmas. Yep. For yeah. God's sakes, just stop it, stop it, stop. It. That's all I'll say about that. Yeah. Um, but that's that's just delightful. That's wonderful. I am I am thrilled that we could we can do that for her, and I'm I'm just <laughs> there's tickle pink. Um, yep. But now you've made it really hard for me to get back into my you know groove your here, grumpiness my, now and and grumpy. well I'm and, not grumpy I'm I'm and, actually very hopeful because um, the the number of people and so the velocity of their anger yeah the velocity of their uh, let's get Let's get these fuckers out. No, that was and my that was my comment. Was these mofo's are going to go? We're co- especially the night that Rachel Maddow cried, and it was babies. It was babies mm-hmm. being held. You know, and again, not I. I don't. I don't want to go back to that mental state because I want to finish recording this show. But absolutely. <laughs> um, that night, just saying, oh, we're coming for you. You know, this right. you're you're gone. We are going to make sure that you're gone, and. The number of a-holes in the Trump administration who are now trying to bring up abortion as being yeah. a, you know, yeah, but, or a what about ism, uh, yeah. when it's Obamacare that has reduced the abortion rate in America, right. and they're trying it to, is. they don't have any other ability. They're the, the legislator, Lature, full of Republicans, doesn't know how to do anything except pass repeal Obamacare laws. That's well, that's their only. That's skill. my note about. Mm-hmm. That's my note about Philip K. Dick versus Donald Trump. Oh, it, it, it is that, a novel. Like, let's let's go there. Philip K. Dick versus Donald Trump. It's just no. It's just Philip K. Dick has a, a novel that's pretty good and falls apart towards the end called Counterclock World, mm-hmm. which one day suddenly people woke up and time was running backwards. Mm. Um, except it wasn't perfect. So if you wrote a great novel. Uh, once the time as it ran backwards approached the time when you wrote the great novel, you would have to unwrite it and then take your only copy of it to the library, which was the controlling government entity of the place, and they would destroy it for you. Hmm. But it was – it rolled back and back and back and back, and time just kept going. And it didn't happen the same on Mars, so it, it wasn't a novel that was entirely thought through. But the key element of that was um, the government was terrified because if time keeps rolling backwards – Eventually, you reach the moment in this novel when the biggest um, social rights activist died, and that person will then come back to life, (laughs) and now we're screwed. So, if you want to go to the back, if you want to take us back to the past, I'm all for it. Let's go. Let's 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 shoot for sixty eight, shall we? Mm -hmm. Let's let's shoot for then. Let's shoot for people in the streets. Goddamn, not Nick. Remember, we're going back past Nick's. Mm -hmm. We're going past Nixon. We're going back. Well, let's go back to the the good old days of streets full of people protesting, of of pastors and children and people in their Sunday best and African Americans walking through the streets, goddamn demanding justice. Because mm-hmm. if that's the past you want to go back to, I'm on board. But I think we already have that. Oh, I think I think the too. elements are, are are all there. So it just struck me that th- literally the only agenda that Donald Trump has is undoing everything Barack Obama did and making the black president disappear yep. into history. And that's never going to happen. Right. Um, right. I also wanted to mention, since you brought up Ann Coulter, mm-hmm. um, that we never talk about Ann Coulter on the show. There's certain people we just don't talk about because they're just such desiccated human waste. All they do is just run in circles, shouting insanity in every direction. And why comment on that? We don't, you, you don't hear us commenting a lot on Fox, but this is more of a media story um, because Ann Coulter uh, was on Fox, some obscure third tier Fox. Thing yeah, Sunday night weekend. show, some something I'd never yeah. heard of before. Yeah, yeah. But she she hangs on to her, you know, her her last little shred of celebrity with her talons dug in deep. And she went on this show and announced that, and I'm going to quote you now. Uh, these child actors weeping and crying on the other networks 24 seven right now don't fall for it, Mr. President. Because they're actors. They, they, these kids are being coached. They're being given scripts to read by liberals. According to the New Yorker, don't fall for the actor children. That's what she mm-hmm. said on television. Mm-hmm. Um, period. Full stop. And, of course, it's a lie. Um, she lied. I, I wrote it up, and I went and looked, and there is no such New Yorker article. There is no mention of child actors. There's nothing like that. So she went on television, and she pretty blatantly lied. Then this week, and this is where activism becomes really important, because the other thing you can do 
is lean hard on your local media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to call their attention to the fact that they are normalizing these lunatics. Mm -hmm. Ann Coulter is syndicated in our local paper. Yep. I had an opportunity to talk with and listen to the op-ed editor of our local paper. I asked them about Ann Coulter specifically. Mm -hmm. And the answer was, well, we have Leonard Pitts. Yeah. And they're pretty much the same. Um, I, I went down the whole list. Here, here are the titles of her books. Uh, she's, she's a lunatic. You said she's all of this to the editorial. I said, I said all this. And the answer was, well, that's your opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many opinions. Um, we do fact check her. So when she, when she says, you know, that X, Y, and Z person was killed on a particular day, uh, it might be wild cherry picking, but the, the facts that she puts in her column are correct as far as we can tell. Um, but the larger question was, well, wait a minute. If, if the right just keeps moving further and further and further to the right, mm -hmm. and you believe that for the sake of fucking balance, you're required to find some midpoint between Ann Coulter and Paul Krugman, and that's where you want to be. All Ann Coulter has to do is just keep moving further right, and you will follow her along like a puppy right. dog. At what point do you, does it become irresponsible of you to publish conservative opinions because they are objectively evil? Mm -hmm. And the answer was, well, we do publish Leonard Pitts, and he's sort of on the left, and Ann Coulter's on the right. And it was the answer I was expecting. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. I didn't you know, storm out. I didn't, that's exact because that's how newspaper op-ed columnists think. Yeah. Yeah. They, they and let's face it, sixty percent of their audience in our community are Trump yeah. voters. Oh yeah, for sure, lifelong and Republicans. If you, ran, who, if you ran a newspaper that actually told the truth about Republicans, you would lose all of your advertisers, yeah. and your paper would fold up tomorrow. But it still is incumbent upon you when you get an opportunity to really ask hard questions. And there was there were a lot of questions for which they had no mm -hmm. answer. It was objectively speaking, over the last decades or so. Um, this they the right has moved way 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 to the right. Mm -hmm. Now why is it okay? And and the other answer was well we used to have Michael Gerson and Kathleen Parker, but they all st started sounding the same. What what they mean is they started sounding against Trump. Right. They all these are Republicans and we who have are once to have one pro Trump voice. Three pro. Trump we have voices. to have for balance. <laughs> for balance, three pro Trump voices, and that's the problem because as the uh, Republicans who I fault for being part of this machine for 30 right. years started going, well, wait a minute, this, this is crazy. This, I mean, this is just objectively nuts. Those people became unacceptable mm -hmm. because they no longer represented the right anymore. Right. Right. Therefore their voices were dialed out and we dialed in Byron York right. and Ann Coulter right. because we have to have both sides. It doesn't matter that one side is objectively evil it matters that we we have this fake balance so that I can say I publish both sides. And that is the problem. Okay, so Dirk Glass, is, I have a question for you. This is me playing devil's advocate. I want to warn you. I want to warn everyone ahead of time. All right, I'm playing devil's advocate here. What would What do you believe that the newspaper editorial people would say if you said, all right, but you are actually silencing real Republican voices? By only by pretending that Trump is the Republican side of things. Well, who would you have us publish? Uh, the Never Trumpers. I, well, those all those all sound they you all know, those sound are all the same, very, and and so you're under tremendous all... pressure mm -hmm. to publish pro-Trump news, pro-Trump editorial Who, uh, content, supportive, right? Supportive, largely supportive of Donald Trump and what right. he's doing, and and. My, so the, an, the, sh the short answer to the implied question mm -hmm. that I would give is the reason you can't find any intellectually honest people to represent Donald Trump is because there, there aren't, aren't any. any. Exactly. Exactly. You, and you can only time, find – If you're going to decide – and again, I'm playing devil's advocate here because I, sure. get, I get what you're saying. But yeah. the people that they are silencing in that equation, if they're going to have Leonard Pitts – and then have Ann Coulter, and that's their balance. First of all, you're right. Uh, eventually, uh, when Ann Coulter shrivels up into the mortal coil that she, you know, goes back to hell. Um, <laughs> and blows away, yes. Uh, you're going to have, eventually you're going to wind up at Stormfront, right? You're going to wind up at some yeah. insane Nazi blog. And mm -hmm. that's going to be the person who says, yes, Trump is right. 
And you're going to have to include that voice in order to have a pro Trump voice on your on your editorial page. Indeed. OK, so that's the logical conclusion to that stand. But well, at the same the other, time, the, the people other... that you are squeezing out of the debate, and this is me playing devil's advocate, are the never Trumpers. More or less. I'm sure there's one or two in there, but they, they have to have you know, all Parker sides is there, right? She's still syndicated. No, she's, no, not. she's not. See? No, she's not in the paper. See, no. that's, that's my point then, is that mm-hmm. they really are silencing the never Trumpers then. Or they're, they're – I, I, I just would argue over the – um, the technical, the semantics of it. I think they're dialing them way uh-huh. down because they all sound the same. Okay, um, but but, but, the, but this, the other- the, that reinforces the the assertion. Let me put it that way. Mm-hmm. That reinforces the assertion that that Donald Trump has quote unquote taken over the Republican Party. Yes, it does. Yes, and it does. that's and, a and false there- statement because the Republican Party has been Trumpian, as I've said. We don't don't you dare call it Trumpism. It is the Republican Party. It has been since Fox News came on the air. And before that, this is Newt Gingrich and Rush Limbaugh. And based on, you know, racial white resentment and a desire for white supremacy. And that's what it has been all along. So but they're reinforcing that belief that Donald Trump is the Republican Party now. Well, and they're also reinforcing a really dangerous Mm -hmm. trend, which is uh Ann Coulter did not specifically lie in the specific right. column that we put in our right. paper. Therefore, she is sufficient to lend our credibility right. to. Right. Except she lies all the time in every other media. So what you're saying is you can trust Ann Coulter. Well, here's the, here's the very specific example that this nonsense about uh, you know these kids being fed mm-hmm. scripts which he very specifically said was based on a New Yorker yeah. article of these kids are being fed scripts, they're actors. Well, she, apparently she was called out repeatedly by many people. And she, of course, did what Ann Coulter does. She went on a massive, um, screaming, hysterical, uh, gish gallop blitz of unrelated mm-hmm. facts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one case she found in The New Yorker, and there was a case of someone who was coached in how to approach her um, immigration status so that she could get asylum was a grown ass woman in New York. It was one case and it was 2011. That was the <laughs> only mention so, of this anywhere in the fucking New Yorker. But Ann Coulter just goes George on a complete one about, Bush well, what president? about or when, no, when Obama was president, 2011. Okay. But, but, but it had nothing to do with children, had nothing to do with this particular policy, had nothing to do with anything that she swore was the truth yeah. on television. She, but, she, of course, being a Republican, you never admit yeah. you're wrong. So she started pulling shit out. Of, what, what about 2007? What about 2009? What about this case? Way the fuck over here. I know a guy whose cousin did this. And it was Ann Coulter knowing that if she ever admits she's wrong, she will, like the Wicked Witch of the West, she will melt and mm-hmm. blow away. And so she just dug in like they do and screamed at the top of her lungs, which is, of course, what you can do if you're Ann Coulter and you have a printed page and no editor and just went berserk. And that will end the argument because who wants to deal with that? The point being, she's nuts and she's evil and she's been nuts and evil for 20 years. Well, since the Clinton blowjob years, that's when she got her start. And the only reason she continues to have a presence in the universe, in the media, in the spotlight, anywhere, is because everyone else thinks she's famous enough to keep putting yep, in their fucking yep. newspaper. So the reason that she's in our paper is because mm-hmm. she's well-known. Well, she's well-known because lots of people like you keep putting her in their paper because she's well-known. She's well-known for being evil and lying and saying horrible things. And that's the problem, is that you can't convince the people who are supposed to be the gatekeepers to keep the well, gates. And, and I think we ought to talk about uh, Michelle Wolf and her video then. Yes. Oh, that, that, that was the perfect, uh, that was the perfect um, yeah. palate cleanser. Michelle <laughs> Wolf really has, was. has a, a show video. now on Netflix and uh, she put a video of a clip of it on YouTube in which she names the New York Times and Barry Weiss by name as Giving off she, well, sing, and sings, sings them, them. <laughs> giving off horrible opinions that all opinions right. are valid. No, these are terrible opinions. And why are you publishing terrible opinions? And the and it's it's a skit, so I'm not going to ruin it. The whole I'm not going to redo the whole thing. No, but 
but she, well put. She, all this idea that all opinions are valid and we need to have all voices and we need to have all this is like no some opinions are really terrible and uh she does it by name and so it's it's worth checking out on youtube look up michelle wolf uh op-ed and you'll find it uh and mm-hmm. and it it connects to what you were just saying about ann coulter that if if everyone retweets it because they're mad at Ann Coulter and what she says, she wins, right? You and I had, right. I That's had, a, don't mention her. and we are now mentioning her. Um, <laughs> we're, we're part of the problem, Drift Glass. No, to make, no, to to illustrate a point about how the media, the actual paid mm-hmm. print mm-hmm. media, keeps yeah. her alive when she, her career should have been yeah. dead 15 and, years and ago. And back when I was blogging at my own blog every day, uh, and that was my only outlet, mm-hmm. uh, I didn't mention her. She was not mentioned. So, you know, no, and no. I think that's, no. I think she is worthy of shunning. If if Jimmy Fallon is worthy of shunning, you know, and he's really, <laughs> he's really upset yeah. now, by the way, folks, because uh, ruffling Donald Trump's hair hurt his career. Yeah. hurt it badly badly and uh he's now you know on a podcast uh complaining about this saying you know please look at the whole body of my work i would not have done this uh you know i i would not have done this i, I would not do this again if i had to do it over i wouldn't have done it uh and good for him good for you that's good for you Jimmy. but uh, a lot of people are not ready to play nice with anybody who enabled this from you know from happening and so uh, I would like to I would like to mention one other person who we'd never talk about on this podcast, <laughs> but in, in service of a, a, a discussion of the larger problem in our media. Mm-hmm. And that person is an obscure writer of, of columns called David Brooks. I never heard of him. Yeah. Or as I refer to him, David fucking Brooks. <laughs> um, and he really exceeded my expectations. This did week. he really? That's hard uh, yes, do. he did. He really, really did. Uh, because because of Stephen Miller, oh, and let me and just the, let um, advise our listeners that if if Drift Glass is going to go on a when he goes on a David Brooks rant, I start a timer, yes. so he's got yes. five minutes. So you can fast uh, forward take, five minutes if you don't want to hear this, but go. <laughs> you'll take three, um, because it, it was David Brooks for the umpteen zillionth time using his New York Times op-ed column to lie, to just lie. Now, he doesn't lie by you know, misrepresenting a specific number, but he lies about the nature of conservatism. And I'm just going to read a couple of things from the column and, and point out the, the obvious fact that David Brooks is lying. Um, what he said in his column this week is that the whole thing with Stephen Miller and putting toddlers in prison illustrates something crucial about this administration. It's not populated by conservatives, blue gal. It's populated by anti-liberal trolls. There's a difference. <laughs> oh, God. And, and, but does he stop there? Of course not. Because the real heroes in this, the real heroes are people like David Brooks. Of course. What's significant? What's most significant is this. The Trump administration immigration officials have become exactly the kind of monsters that conservatives, conservatism has always warned against. Mm-hmm. Really? That's remarkable. I don't remember reading that anywhere. But how long, Blue Gal, how long has conservative been warning about these monsters? For centuries, Blue Gal, for centuries, conservatives have repeated a specific critique against state power. For centuries, David Brooks has been a hero, warning us every day out there with his bell and his sackcloth and his ashes going, don't elect monsters. But who is to blame, Blue Gal? Who are the real villains here? According to David Brooks, America's most ubiquitous conservative public intellectual and who is the center according to every idiot on the internet who goes oh brooks nailed it he just fucking nailed it um the real villains here will not surprise you people like stephen miller are not steeped in conservative thinking and do not operate with conservative disposition they were formed by their rebellion against the stifling conformity they found at liberal universities that's right blue gal Liberals are to blame for Stephen Miller, mm-hmm. not conservatism. Has nothing to do with this. I just and then I went back to nineteen to two thousand six, and pulled an old Digby column, in which she coins the phrase "conservatism cannot fail; it can only be failed." Yep, because that's always the excuse of conservative trolls like David Brooks, who are paid enormous amounts of money by the New York Times to lie to people 
twice a week, every week in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. Somehow it's never conservatism that's the fault. And somehow the crisis is never here. The crisis is always in the offing or it just passed. It's either, it's, it, if we don't stop it now, soon, someday, eventually something bad might happen. Or, oh, thank goodness, the bad times are over. Now conservatism is in a renaissance. The, the Republican Party is reborn. David Brooks writes those two columns back and forth, back and forth every six months for the last 15 years. And that's why the media is broken. Because Ann Coulter is the conservative and David Brooks is the sensible center. And there's no room in this equation for actual liberals who've been actually right all along. Is that five minutes? That was... No, and that was not my timer. That was uh, Middle Child's uh, alarm on my phone that she put on there for 420. 420, blaze it. Blaze it. <laughs> and she's not here. Right. So in her honor. <laughs> she is on here. vacation with her dad on the other side of the country. Mm -hmm. And so she set an alarm on my phone to go off at 420. That's right. Um, <laughs> I, I can't even, you know? <laughs> But I'm done. I, I, I finished you did, my. You uh, did under five minutes, and it is 4:20. We're we're blazing it here at, at Casa DGBG. No, we're not. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did I did confirm that the I really don't care jacket uh, came from the juniors department. It is it is designed for teens. Mm -hmm. That's that yes. is who it's designed for. Uh, okay. Um, you want to do a uh, uh, a little rundown of the news or the. Around now because uh yeah we are to the point okay where well there's a lot of at, news but i do want to I, I I mention youngest child is home by the way and i promised uh -huh. her we would be done by 4 35 so we've got 15 minutes left okay. all right well i wanted to mention sterling archer yes because sterling archer as you know is the world's greatest secret agent <laughs> and he pioneered and he pioneered just ask him and he pioneered the use of the tactical turtleneck. Everyone knows this, the tactile neck. Oh, Lord. Well, <laughs> Scott Pruitt, Scott Pruitt has spent more than $4.6 million in taxpayer money on security, including $2,749.62 on, quote, tactical pants and, quote, tactical polos. So I just so thought, you know. Class, tactical pants and tactical polos. Uh -huh. Those cost more than our mortgage and health insurance combined. Yes, they do. That puts yes, everything in perspective, Drift Glass. It really does. And, of course, Scott Pruitt, his whole motto is, why the fuck not? Uh, yeah, exactly. They put me in charge of the candy store. I like candy. I don't see the cops anywhere. Hey, the cops, I own all the cops. Right. The cops all work for me now. So, fuck it. Let's just stuff our pockets. Did you put and anything in here per about Wilbur Ross? Uh, I did. Oh, let's get to that, it's, too, because it's, it's connected. It's on page seven. It's on page 72 of our oh notes. Oh, my God. Yeah, Wilbur Ross, who is the Commerce Secretary. He is the Commerce uh, Secretary. Short, <laughs> he, short, he shorted a stock in a Kremlin-linked uh, shipping firm after learning that journalists were investigating his offshore investments. That's called white. playing the win-win game, you know? It is. It's just it's outright fucking theft. That's all it is. It's outright theft. And... You know, um, for for thirty percent of this country, they don't know, they don't care. For another third, they are too busy doing whatever the hell it is people do who pay no attention to this to pay any attention to this. If anyone um, knows I, out there knows anything about investing, I would like mm -hmm. to know how the fuck shorting a stock is legal. Yeah, when you have advanced information, I don't understand how it is legal to bet that a stock is going to go down, and who does who benefits from that. Besides Wilbur well, Ross, you mean any stock or just this particular any case? Any stock. What is what is the well, purpose Gals, of who does this benefit? Here's what we're going to do. You and I, after this, we're going to we're going to bust out a copy of Trading Places. <laughs> we're going to talk about orange futures yeah, or orange yeah, juice. Yeah, futures. this seems like there's a whole lot of shit out there in Wall Street world. Yeah, I wrote a short story. I started a short story in our writing class this week that uh, talked about the children at the border and talked about pressing nine for Spanish, nueve, yes. and ended with, this is America, speak banking. Because I had to call my bank on a day to fix something. They had to fix something. Right. That they broke. That they broke. And uh, because I speak customer service and English... <laughs> I knew yeah. exactly how to approach the problem in a way that they could give me everything I wanted. 
but I'm fully cognizant of the fact that I have all of these skills and all of this mm-hmm. uh, talent and privilege <laughs> behind me that allows me to do this. And so when, when I'm going through this on a day when we've all learned that babies are in cages on behalf of our government, and I hear in Spanish, you know, press nine for Spanish. And I think, oh, wow, the MAGA types are all bent out of shape about that. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. that really there's there's a lot of lay- layers there. One thing that happened to us in the past week is we lost our battle with Obamacare in terms and the Trump yeah. administration in terms of being able to get subsidies that we feel we're entitled to. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, we're not going to have them. We're going to pay uh, full price for our health insurance for the next year. And uh, at, at half the income that we had before uh, Obama, before Amazon dumped us. And I was laid off. And you were laid off. Uh, and now Amazon has to charge sales tax to every all 50 in all 50 states. <laughs> um, That's a good thing. <sighs> deep breath. Um we were hoping that this would be resolved and we would have some subsidies, but we're, we don't have those. But after I shed tears over that and felt awful about that and felt depressed about that, uh, you know, a thought tapped me on the shoulder and you can take that however you want, um, saying, Fran, you are mm-hmm. the best person to advocate for people like you who are going through this. That's absolutely true. And so having this, you have been given this problem because you are the best person. And sure enough, you know, I've already have a list of the states where uh, freelancers and other independent people will fall through this loophole. Uh, I've started compiling the addresses of the secretary of the, no, the attorneys general for those states, Mm -hmm. because that's where it's got to go. And the fact that I just already know that. (laughs) Right. You know, that this has to go to the attorneys general of the states. There's 33 states where this is the case, where a uh, freelancer who has uh, a change in income and uh, is off of the exchange and has uh, loses the ability to get a subsidy as a result. Um, you just deleted a trigger warning. <laughs> I deleted the whole thing because I'm... Okay. My wife is at her saturation point now. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I'm the perfect person to uh, take this on and get attorneys general's attention for how th- how we can change this and how this is not the intent of the states that no. provided these options to people. So this is just a screwed up um, um, unintended consequence of – it's not. a it's a loophole that was not part of the intention of the attorneys of the no. states that made this change. Yeah, so and the, all the changes were well intentioned, but right. it left this big loophole where well, if you have and a sudden... it was in reaction to Trump. So let's right. also admit that Trump was right. taking money out of the Obamacare uh, system, and the mm-hmm. states reacted to that by uh, making a less expensive silver plan off of the exchange that people could buy. It's still very right. expensive. But, but it's, it's out of the exchange and you can you can buy it and it's at a lower cost. And it's basically it's, getting a subsidy from the state instead of from the federal government. Right. And and but if you take that option and then your income you're plummets, out. you're locked out. You you're go locked. back to the exchange and say, hold, um, I, I'm sorry, I'm a freelancer. I did, you know, my income dropped by 50 percent. Right. If you miss the date, you're screwed for a year. You're screwed for a year. Yep. Yeah. And so it's just. Not fair, <laughs> nope. but you know, it's first world problems folks. And we understand that. Um, and our, and so now, I mean, and, and the other thing is because of all of that, uh, our premiums will be deductible from our taxes because it's healthcare costs. And I it's just, my wife is well positioned to be <laughs> a superhero in so many different ways. Yeah. And, and autism I would give advocacy. Up all of this. To make sure that every one of those babies is back with their mom. I know you would. I know you would. This, I, yeah, I would. I would, I would sacrifice go without... and pay for the rest of my life, and be poor for the rest of my life. I've been poorer than this, folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know how you feel, baby. And it's I would I would give up writing about David Brooks. <laughs> yep. Yes. 
Yep. Yes. Well, I'm giving you a hug. We're we're 40 feet apart, yeah. but I'm giving you a big hug right now. <laughs> Give me a big hug. Okay, I'm I'm gonna roll through the news real quick. And you take a yeah. breath. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This this is the week that we learned that uh, according to President Stupid, crime in Germany is way up. Except, of course, the opposite is true. It's way down. Uh, but you got to scare people about immigrants, so just make shit up, right? Um, I'm I'm betting that sudden drastic policy changes on immigration are going to be the new terror alerts. Remember those? Oh Remember yeah, those from Bush yeah. Years? Level when orange to, right you know, before the election, right? Right. When you need to tweak the, the the base and get them out to the election, you scare them about gay people and you scare them about terrorists. Because uh, the White House policy advisor Stephen Miller has said that Trump administration is planning additional immigration crackdowns before the midterms. So. Buckle in, folks. Is, Here it this comes. This is manipulating the, his stupid base. Yeah, for sure. Right. And, and and also, I I the the part about yesterday, Wednesday, when he was going to have this executive order, and yeah. DHS had written up an executive order for him to sign, and for an hour and a half, it was, "Will he or won't he?" And I'm yeah. sitting there like, "Well, of course, it's going to be the focus is going to be on him and whether or not he comes in to save the day." It's this mm-hmm. reality TV show presidency. And uh, nothing is real and nothing matters anymore when it comes from that person. Well, well, and um, uh, uh, Anne-Marie Cox was at the Duluth rally and she wrote about in the Rolling Stone. I've skimmed through it, but what she was mostly what, what hit her was how giddy and happy people were there. Wow. Because and I, I, I sent her a tweet saying, of course they were, you know, in the, in the final days of the thousand year Reich. They were partying in the bunker yeah. and they were assuming giant and invisible armies were going to come manifest themselves and come save them. And they were just nuts. They were completely cut off from reality. That's what the Trump base is. They're, they don't they don't even talk to reality anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's nothing to do with them except to double check on whether or not his project is going well. Vladimir Putin apparently will be here next month. Check up on Donald Trump. Make sure he's following orders because, you know. Check up on my oh, investment. Yeah. 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 Um, just to, I have uh, three words. Space Force bitches. Yes, America will have a sixth branch of the armed forces, and it will be in space. And the rebels will pay for it. That's right. Cameron Grant at Cool Cam 101 mm-hmm. won, won the recruitment slogan for the Space Force. The rebels will pay for it. Rebel scum, you'll pay for this. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Uh, Jason Kessler, who you might remember is the organizer of la- one of the organizers of last year's neo-Nazi rally in Charlottesville, has right. somehow gotten initial approval to hold a rally on the National Mall across from the White House on August 12th. I looked this up. Fun fact, Blue Gal, August 12th will be the 80th anniversary of the Third Reich mobilizing its military to get ready to take over Europe. So that's I exciting. See. Yeah. Yeah. Breaking news here, people. It's 80 years out of date, but it's still breaking news. Steve Bannon has said very clearly that Donald Trump has never lied to the American people. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, In budget news, it turns out separating migrant children from their parents costs actually more than twice as much as keeping them with their parents. Absolutely. Free labor. And and the uh, ankle bracelet, uh, the program that they had, they had a pilot program Uh to uh, have parents and uh, people seeking asylum voluntarily wear an ankle bracelet. And then they would be allowed to come into the country while their case was being adjudicated. Mm-hmm. And uh, that program was was uh, bringing about a 99 percent rate of people showing up for court dates. Uh, it seemed to be working really, really well. And uh, they'd stopped it. You know, you know the why they stopped was? it? Because it's a Obama program. Yo, hmm? Of course. You know who the one percent was that never showed up? Uh, Paul Manafort. Yeah, it was Paul Manafort. It was Paul Manafort. <laughs> Yeah, he took his fifth passport and fled the country. Right? He's, he's trying. He's he's at he's at the gate. My <sighs> name is Miguel. Uh... Can we can we also talk about the fact? Yes, since we last recorded a podcast, Paul Manafort went to jail, yes, he and did. he was immediately moved to a better jail. Better jail. This and, is not. Uh, everyone was saying he was going to be sleeping with cockroaches, and you know, and sort of cheering about that a little bit. No, there is nothing right about a jail that's infested with cockroaches. No, it's that's. The jail is where you go. Too. <laughs> the jail is where you go to see what whether a country is civilized or not. Yep. And jails should be places where people are held in advance of trial or held at carrying out their sentence that are clean <laughs> and well tended and well guarded and their safety is maintained and on and on and on. So I'm I'm I know the whole idea of going to jail and suffer suffer suffer. Being locked up is suffering enough. Yep. You don't really need any more than that. 
accomplishes the social purpose and uh, we don't need to make it any more cruel than it already is. Um, speaking of going to jail, federal prosecutors subpoenaed the publisher for the National Enquirer as part of their Michael Cohen investigation. Mm-hmm. I think Michael's going to jail too. I don't know uh, uh, that for sure, but I think he's going to jail. Uh, the other end of the billionaire spectrum Michael Bloomberg said he's going to cut a check for $80 million to support Democratic congressional candidates in 2018. Mike, if you have that kind of money and you're willing to spend it on advancing Democratic causes, our P.O. Box is 9133. Springfield, Illinois, 62791. Yeah, just cut a check. The uh, All those um, other checks we're getting from Soros. Yeah, that, they those are kind of clearing. Out. Those, the Soros no, checks turned, are bouncing. It turned out there were novelty checks uh, <laughs> on Post-it notes. Apparently, they don't count. <laughs> um, Donald Trump has threatened to shut down the government in September if Congress doesn't provide $25 billion for his stupid wall. Yeah. So that's exciting. It's, and, time, and just, it's time to say that the wall is a physical impossibility, folks. Right. Yeah. And Mexico will pay for that physical impossibility. Physical just impossibility, Mex- if you really want funding to, to do studies and so forth, ask Mexico for the money. Yep. And US, the U.S. has bailed on the uh, U.N. Human Rights Council, so we don't do that anymore. That's exciting. Uh, according to reports, John Kelly, who was going to save everyone, uh, and apparently all the generals didn't quit at the same time like they promised they would, has given up all hope of trying to control President Stupid and has resigned himself to the possibility of Trump being impeached. The two are, quote, barely tolerating each other, mm. unquote. So that's exciting. Again, very exciting. Um, the Trump administration intentionally nominated a consumer financial protection asshole uh, who might not be confirmed, deliberately sort of tanking it, just so that would allow Mick Mulvaney to stay on for as long as two more years. So they put, you know, a dummy up mm-hmm. so that would guarantee fail. And it's like the producers, guaranteed failure means we're going to get rich. So that's exciting. Uh, the Dow fell 300 points after Donald Trump announced that he w- wanted to do $200 billion worth of dick waving with the Chinese. Uh, so, you know, stock market, that's good. Donald Trump rolled back uh, consumer protection mandated by the Affordable Care Act. So they're busy. I mean, getting rid of every single thing Barack Obama did that was any good for anyone and screaming about immigrants and brown people and holding rallies, it's a full-time job, Lou Gal. Mm-hmm. It's nothing you can just uh, skip over. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things, but I do want to mention that uh, Rudy Giuliani, remember him? Short guy, evil, full of bile, kind of nuts. Uh he, this was the week when he told the, when he said the Mueller investigation is over, when it's all over, things might get cleaned up with some presidential pardons. Because why the hell wouldn't he say that? It's not like anyone's going to take him away or make him stop saying it or, or stop putting microphones in his mouth. Also, he called on Jeff Sessions and Rod Rosenstein to, quote, redeem themselves by getting rid of the investigation immediately. Yep. Isn't that exciting? Yep. Yep. Here in Illinois, Donald Trump rescinded Obama's rules protecting the Great Lakes and the oceans bordering the U.S. The order encourages more drilling and other industrial uses of the oceans and the Great Lakes. And in also in Illinois, the Trump Tower in Chicago has never followed EPA rules. And so they suck up so much of the Chicago River and are yeah, doing nothing do. to preserve the fish in that river, which yep. they are uh, mandated by law to do, and they're mm-hmm. not doing it. Yep. And the Chicago River is a... Not 100%, but a pretty big success story because it used to be just a slag heap. It was just un... And people people alive now remember going out to the river. I'm not one of them, but they're, they're going out with their dads or granddads and fishing and eating what they took out of the river. And the Chicago River was on its way to being cleaned up. Yeah. So it, they're all evil, Blue Gal. They're, they're all, all bad. They're they all, all have to go. People. And in November, they all will go, or at least the first step will be in getting rid of them all. And... Then I hate to break it to you. The real work comes. Yeah. Because the real work is you have to burn the lifeboats, folks. Yep. You have to make sure they don't get away with it this time. Because as sure as I'm sitting here, they're, they're, the media will mobilize itself to to uh, to grant a general amnesty to everyone involved so that we can all forget about it. And if you think I'm nuts, take it up with Bill Crystal. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Anyway, you know what we do each week on this podcast. We do, and and, uh, take some time to breathe this week. I know we didn't do a Bible bitch this week, but suffer the children to come unto me is what Jesus said. Well, mention what the Methodist Church did. Oh, yeah. The Methodist Church is uh, calling on (laughs) 
Jeff Sessions, who I can't believe it, but he is a Methodist, uh, six over 600 clergy in the United Methodist Church signed this letter, uh, basically saying, dude, what you're doing is child abuse. And this is the kind of thing that you would do within the church and move very quickly if you noticed that a pastor was doing child abuse. Uh, That's right. You would also uh, report it to the authorities and and get him arrested, but him or her arrested. Uh, in this particular instance, uh, they wrote a letter and are following what we call the Book of Discipline, uh, that he is not in keeping with the teachings of the church with his policies, and uh, they want to have a little talk with him about it. And isn't there a specific? Specific policy that mentions separating. There is, there is in one of the books that you know a lot of these came out in kind of the reform era. Some of them were written in sixty seven. Some of them were written before that. And the book of discipline's been around you know since forever, but it's been revised a time or two. But someone on Twitter found the page and underlined it where it talks about uh, the policy of separating uh, children from their parents and how that is not in keeping with the teachings of our church. So mm-hmm. like. He is very specifically <laughs> disobeying a rule that is in writing, that is in print within the church. And they can't put him in jail because there's no church jail. No, there's no church jail. And this is not ecclesiastical. He's not a, a a pastor. And this usually isn't used at all against the laity. I mean, it's just not. But but they can drum his ass this out. Is what, yeah, this is what they came up with because they need mm-hmm. to do something. And, and he yeah. is being so blatantly... Uh, anti-Christian. And uh, I know that um, the people, I I believe that the people in our particular conference in Illinois, in central Illinois, uh, were from the council office or the conference office who signed this. Um, Our pastor uh, said something in church about it on Sunday. And Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people feel that the uh, door was opened when Jeff Sessions used the Bible to defend yes. his decisions, you know, that we obey the law. It's horrible, it's, undefensible, right. and, atrocious. And, but also he opened the door and, and the word sandbox was used in the pulpit this week. Yes, it was. Uh, mm-hmm. You walked into my sandbox by saying the Bible says that you should obey me. Mm-hmm. You know, that we should obey the law, mm-hmm. that I'm just obeying the law. And, of course, that's that Bible verse has been used to justify slavery. It was used to justify being obedient to the British monarchy when we're during the American Revolution. Uh, mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, that's not the one that we want to turn to. And um, I'm just very proud of my church. Uh, ele- nine to 11, I'm, tr- I'm trying to remember the count. I think I had 11. 11 uh, clergy within our conference signed that mm-hmm. letter specifically which is that's a, lot. a lot that's a lot, a lot. yeah mm-hmm. um but i think i do think it uh drift glass that they uh handed that around at the conference office and that's why our pastor wasn't on that signatory yeah. thing so he's middle management he's, middle management. he's, not, he's not right <laughs> this this was guys yeah. up there and and instead and still they had over 600 signatures and yep. they had signatures from the um, conference offices in Alabama, where Jeff Sessions is a member. Yeah, I'm a more of a Hillary Clinton United Methodist than a Jeff Sessions United yeah. Methodist. Yeah. Just yeah. saying. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Thank, yeah. Remember to breathe. Remember to read a book or uh, get involved in a charity or donate to charity. Uh, Parker Malloy, if you know Parker Malloy on Twitter. Um, has mm-hmm. started today something called I Do Care. I actually something I Do Care dot com, ah. <laughs> which is a website that links to I believe it's fourteen organizations that are making a difference in in the, at the border, uh, mm-hmm. including the ACLU. I give uh, eight whole dollars every month to the ACLU automatically mm-hmm. because that is what I can afford, and that is how I make a difference, and that is how I show up. And so, mm-hmm. you know, make make your decision whether you, uh, thank you if you get donated to this podcast, but do something that's going to make a difference. It will help you feel better about how things are going um, right now. Mm-hmm. We are trying to get our Patreon level of support up to a thousand bucks a month and we're getting there. We're at like mm-hmm. seven something. Uh, and so if we had something mm-hmm. like 250 people give one dollar a month, 
we'd be at our goal. So, uh, so if we had, what you're saying is if we had one mention on a larger national <laughs> podcast, that would do it. Never mind. Pretty much it. That would and do it. Uh, read a book, folks. Read books. Um, yeah. yeah. Barack Obama uh, mentioned yeah. some of the books that he's been reading lately. Uh, and someone pointed out, you're just rubbing it in because you're the last president who could read. <laughs> uh, but yeah. uh, today there is a uh, Scholastic Reading Summit going on with te- reading teachers sharing how they are helping students uh, love reading. And uh, one of the um, lines that one of the teachers brought up in her presentation was a line from the Harry Potter books where uh, Ron, Ron Weasley says, I know what to do. We'll do what Hermione does. When in doubt, go to the library. Isn't that lovely? That's lovely. That's That's a a wonderful sentiment. sentiment. All right. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Misty, who purrs on her own time frame and would rule the world if she had thumbs. (laughs) I'm sure she would. Misty is a beautiful kitty, and you should visit Misty at our Facebook page and website. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. And it can be an iced beverage as well. It certainly is hot out there. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have our PayPal, postal address, Patreon, and GoFundMe information all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. I notice when both sides and both siderism is in the news that we have a lot of listeners out there that go to Twitter and say, you know, <laughs> there's a podcast out we there do. that has been on this we for do. over 400 episodes. And, hey, we appreciate the props. It's like our early alert system, you know. It is. Yeah. It is. Both sides don't. Mm-hmm. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties say a fond farewell and rest in peace to Coco the Gorilla. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.